this plantation, Varna Hogg, does not bear the patent name. You know, there was Martin Varner, who was the first owner. He would have been one of Austin's old 300. And then it skips the Patton family era and goes to the Governor Hogg era. So it's, in that way, it erases the history of Patton Place or the Patton Plantation. And so what we have to do is tell the story of the entire plantation and all those that helped to build the wealth and helped to establish this great country of ours. I have the feeling that in some way the truth, it's, it's trying to be told. The story of Varner Hogg Plantation begins with pioneer settler Martin Varner and his family. They brought enslaved people on the long journey to Texas. I, I can just only imagine the emotions that they went through and the pain they felt and the loneliness of leaving all your loved ones uh, behind and having to start over. Although slavery had been abolished in the Northern American states and in Mexico, slavery existed in Texas as indentured servitude, a legal sleight of hand that helped convince slave owners to come to Texas. In 1834, Martin Varner sold his land to the Patton family from Kentucky. They arrived in Texas along with dozens of slaves who built the plantation home and so much more. When people arrive here on the plantation and they see the big plantation house, they think um, basically that's the plantation, that's all there was to it. But they don't realize that this was actually a booming agricultural complex with many buildings. We had the two-story sugar mill here. There were about 18 slave quarters across the way. There were several other workshops, including a blacksmith shop. There was a cotton gin and just a variety of buildings that went into shaping this into the agricultural place that it was. For many of those who resided at the Varner Hogg Plantation, the only record of their existence are the fingerprints left on the clay bricks used to build the slave quarters. Settlers poured into this area, establishing plantation and farms all along the Brazos River, which served as a lifeline to ports and markets outside the area. Brazoria County became one of the wealthiest and most populated areas in Texas. But by 1850, nearly 70% of the people living in Brazoria County were slaves. Who's really doing all the work? Who's doing all the building? Who's doing all the production of wealth? So the sugar plantations, the cotton plantations, this entire slave system that was producing this wealth for Brazoria was being divided by a small few. Um, at the height of this plantation sugar production, they were making about 245 barrels of sugar per season. The canes would be taken from the field over here, processed through this sugar mill, and then loaded into those thousand pound barrels called hogsheads. The hogsheads were then rolled down this little sort of natural chute here onto Varner Creek, loaded on the rafts, and then shipped off to market. And so that's how uh, the plantation ran and gained the majority of its wealth here on site. Over the years, around 100 men, women, and children were enslaved at Patton Plantation. In the evenings, slaves returned home to their quarters across the creek from the big house. The slave people formed their own community within the, the, the subjugation, within the fact that they were controlled. They still had the power of community. But one slave, Rachel, held a unique position separate from the rest of the slave community. While she was technically enslaved, the historical records reveal she lived with Columbus Patton, acting as his wife and mistress at this plantation. That all changed when Columbus Patton died. His family, angry at the terms of his will, blamed Rachel and coerced her to move to Ohio, where she stayed until after the Civil War. Patton Plantation was still in legal probate when Union troops arrived to announce that the days of slavery were over. After hundreds of years uh, and after decades of, uh, of ancestors that had dealt with this bondage, I uh, can imagine the jubilant uh, atmosphere that it created for the enslaved people to finally know that their prayers have been answered and that they were finally free. You know, the first 10 years after the slaves were free was uh, 
opportunity for them. They built schools, they formed communities, and in some instances they even attained elected positions. But that all came to a screeching halt, you know, when the Union soldiers were pulled out and, and, and life became very oppressive again. African Americans were arrested in high numbers, earning long jail sentences for minor crimes. The old Patton place, now owned by investors, earned a reputation for cruel treatment of convict workers. These prisoners were forced to work in a corrupt and violent system that has been called slavery by a different name. And so the plantation then began to continue its, its, la its labor force through the use of, of convicts. That was, the, that, was, that was their answer to emancipation of, of slaves. Even with cheap convict labor, the plantation was never really profitable. It fell into disrepair. Then, in 1900, a hurricane destroyed what remained of the old patent place. Only the plantation home remained standing. In 1901, the old Patton home was bought by former Texas Governor James Hogg. In 1918, his family struck oil. Young men rushed into the area to work the booming oil fields. The Hogg family renovated the old Patton home, creating an idyllic country retreat that bore little resemblance to the hard-working plantation it had once been. In 1958, I'm a Hogg donated this property as a historical museum which she filled with her collection of American antiques. Over the years, the way that we have looked at history here has changed. Today, this site also tells the story of the enslaved people who lived and worked here. Interviews with former slaves like Sarah Ford shed a new light on history. Her words remind us of a history that should not be forgotten. Law me. There was heaps of things going on in slave time but won't go on no more, cause the bright light has come. I don't like to talk about some of the things I have seen with my own eyes. And I like to think of good things, but I tell you the truth now, just for once, what I have seen. <laughs> <laughs>